Hello, gang. We are coming at you again live. It is cocktail hour, and who the hell knows what number this particular episode is. We don't 166. Care. It's what? 166. Oh, got a couple of sixes in there. Anyway, so well, we're happy you're here. Yeah. Nearly the Battle of Hastings. <laughs> it's like the all I remember oh from my, my yeah, like Westerns of... <laughs> Oh my God. 1066 was the battle of things. Oh my. Okay. So we're glad you're all here. We're all here, as you can see, and uh, on time and uh, not too much of a gap as far as we've been doing in the recent past. And uh, we're going to be talking about Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. So there you go. That's what's on the agenda. Yup. All right. Yep. So what's, your, what's everybody drinking? Let's go with Sherry. I am having, I found this in the back of the refrigerator. It hadn't been opened yet, and it's not tremendously old. Um, it's Ellis Isle uh, tea, hibiscus, rose hips, and mint. Hmm. And I, I got it. My company sent us all little care packages from a locally owned business that had um, all kinds of healthy-ish snacks in it. So it's pretty good. I'm enjoying it. It's really deep red look at that it is i know wow wow what about you call out what you drinking well i mean <laughs> penicillin cheers <laughs> <laughs> i don't think we've had uh you know like two consciously chosen same drinks uh back and back-to-back -back shows consciously coupled Yes. Yeah, back to back shows. Yeah, it's been yeah. a while. Better than consciously uncoupling, but <laughs> <laughs> did the did, did that did that get? Did, that's a Gwyneth Paltrow thing when she and her husband separated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They consciously uncoupled. Yeah, I just yeah, wow. I know and her know. and her vagina candles. <laughs> yeah, it's seriously. Oh. Oh. The is just kind of gross. Just oh, oh. rich white ladies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First world nation problems. <laughs> really sure that that's uh, not uh. something that. So anyway, um, okay. So yeah. We... For the book. Yeah. For the, the book. book. So, um, Colette, did you did you finish it? Were you able to finish it? <laughs> that's how I felt at the end. And Andy made a conscious choice to stop before her head exploded. So, um, but okay. So to be fair, right. You read this with your eyes, right? Sherry. I did both. I okay. mostly listened. Um, and and I'll, I'll tell you more about that later. Should we, should we say what the book is about? Sure. Okay. Andy, you don't happen to have it pulled up. Do you? Uh, I can get it real quick. I got it right here. I mean, I feel like the synopsis is probably going to be at least 11 pages long. <laughs> <That one. laughs> right? So you're going to be hard pressed to have just a quick. Okay. Uh, I think I've got something up here. Let me see. Oh my God. It is. It's, it's. <laughs> Really so that was accurate yeah okay yeah it, it's like five long paragraphs is what it is yes. like, i got to the point where i had to start writing down all the <laughs> characters and who they are um because we would come across somebody and i'm like who the, fuck, the fuck is that, is that? <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. you want yeah. me to read it um i guess go ahead okay <laughs> here we go this will give you guys time to relax and chill a little bit Oh, see you at the end of the show. <laughs> Our story begins in 1902 at the Brookhaunt School for Girls. Flo and Clara, two impressionable students, are obsessed with each other and with a daring young writer named Mary McLean, the author of a scandalous best-selling memoir. To show their devotion to Mary, the girls establish their own private club and call it the Plain Bad Heroin Society. They meet in secret in a nearby apple orchard, the setting of their wildest happiness and ultimately of their macabre deaths. Would you do something? 
This is where their bodies are later discovered with a copy of Mary's book splayed beside them, the victims of a swarm of sting, stinging, angry yellow jackets. Less than five years later, the Brookhaunt School for Girls closes its doors forever, but not before three more people mysteriously die on the property, each in a most troubling way. Over a century later, the now abandoned and crumbling book Brookhaunts is back in the news when Wonderkind writer Merritt Emmons publishes a breakout book celebrating the queer feminist history surrounding the haunted and cursed Gilded Age institution. Her best-selling book inspires a controversial horror film adapt adaptation starring celebrity actor and lesbian it girl Harper Harper playing the ill-fated heroine Flo opposite B-list actress and former child star Audrey Wells as Clara. But as Brooke Hans opens its gates once again and our three modern heroines arrive on set to begin filming, past and present become grimly entangled, or perhaps just grimly exploited, and soon it's impossible to tell where the curse leaves off and Hollywood begins. Is that it? There's more to it, but that, that's it. Yeah, okay. that's it. <laughs> Oh my god. Section six. Footnote <laughs> <laughs> two. Yeah. Oh, okay. So all right. I think my expectations for this book were way high for a few reasons, right? Um our friend Megan had been wanting to read this for a while. I kind of looked at it, I was like, oh, okay, that sounds cool. Let's do it. I had heard good things from other people. And then Colette, who is on like this roll of on really good suggestions, mm -hmm. brought it up and I, that was enough for me. I'm like, okay, cool, here we go. For the record, you're done, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fair. Um, I lasted you, longer than I expected. Yeah, you had a really good run. Yeah, you had a really yeah, good run. Yeah, super yeah. good run. Yeah. So um there was no creepy stalker toilet scenes in any of the recent books. And that was refreshing. That was yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, this one had a lot going for it. It's got Hollywood, it's got lesbians, it's got ghosts it's you know got a blurb from sarah waters across the top that said some you know really good shit some, some, and also some. it was supposed to be like gothic humor right right so yeah and i thought well that's intriguing yeah so she says uh the quote from sarah waters brimming from start to finish with sly humor and gothic mischief brilliant it was not it was not. It was overly long. It this this book is like six hundred pages long, more yeah. than that. It's it's uh, I don't know, really fucking long. It was like twenty hours recorded. Um, yeah. And and part of the problem that I had was the footnotes because I couldn't figure out. First of all. Um, just these weird little offshoots because when you're listening, you don't know that they're footnotes. Uh, you just realize that in the middle of a sentence or at the end of a sentence, they would, the narrator would kind of go off on this historical tangent and then come back to finish the paragraph. Um, in the book, it was just as irritating to have to tap on it and i know this is not a big deal but when there's they're all the time right so you tap on it the thing comes up you read it you tap to make it go away and you know i don't i am not a fan of footnotes in fiction i've never seen it before i've seen it a, a few times i don't care for it it yeah, pulls I, the reader right the fuck out i think it was meant to be sort of you know, true to the era, right? The turn of the century era. Um, and I think it was an extension of the narrator, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which can I just, I'll just, well, so spoilers or no spoilers? Uh, when did this come out? May 20. Uh, October 20th. Uh, I'm sorry, October 2020. It's, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's been out long enough. I, so viewers, Spoiling. if you don't want spoilers, <laughs> you have a choice to make. You can you can go back. You can uh, just you turn can... the sound down and watch us speak. I mean, that's <laughs> obviously a choice. 
and as a choice, uh, you could go get the, a copy of the book and read it for yourself. Um, I, ha I still haven't read any of the other reviews. Oh, one of the people I really look up to for book book stuff gave it five stars. Loved yeah, it. One of the it favorite seems books. like mm -hmm. it's a very feast or famine kind of response. There's not yeah. a lot of middle ground from what mm -hmm. I could see when I took yeah. a peek. Um, yeah. So what I was going to say was with regard to the narrator, um, the narrator is the one person in this book that I really liked. Oh, I didn't. Um, oh, you no, mean the voice of the narrator? narrator. She's uh, such a smarmy bitch. Oh, oh, okay. So you mean the actual narrator of the book, not the narrator of the audiobook. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No. Okay. The, yeah, this whole the whole book uh in multiple time periods is told through this sort of omniscient POV. Um, and I was Really kind of disappointed that we never figured out who that was. Oh, yeah, we do. No, we don't. Uh, yeah, at the very end, we sure do. Like the very last thing she says. All right, well, we already said there's spoilers, so who the fuck is it? Because it's, I... it's Merit. It's her writing her story. It's her write. It's the, it's the book that she was writing during the production of the film. It's, it's, it's her... It, it's merit. Okay. How does she know all the shit that happened when she wasn't there? Oh, oh well, they all had cameras. Which I don't fucking know. I don't know. None of this shit makes any sense. I don't understand. Here's my biggest thing. I don't understand what, why the, what was the point of the entire current era being a part of this story? Yeah, I, that, I'm it, not sure. I did. It didn't add anything for me. It, yeah. it was the book was overly long, had way too many characters, had way too many you know little twists that were just for me just like oh fucking hell come on, let's just get to the goddamn story. It was just too much. It was too much. I just you know and uh, there were parts of it that I enjoyed right, but. Can you imagine how different this story would have been if it just focused on the characters from 1902? It would have been great. I think because I would have really that, liked that it. That did draw me in initially, was mm -hmm. the the them finding the two women basically swarmed in yellow jackets. And I was like, wow, right? I'm thinking, this is a great start. I was so excited mm -hmm. and so hyped. And then like a balloon deflating. How far did you get? Uh, I got to the part where, um, uh, uh what's her name? <laughs> yeah, don't know. <laughs> no, 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 I'll get it. Not Elise. What the hell is her name? Uh, Elaine and Elaine, oh, Aunt Elaine. Uh, Bo and whoever the hell else they were talking about how they were going to do like set up cameras on the oh, set. Oh, Aud Audrey. Uh, right. It was Audrey and Caroline. And yeah. and Elaine and Bo and Heather and Noel. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's where I got to. And I'm like, I've had enough. I have just fucking had enough. Because up until that point, I kept hanging on by fingernails, thinking, mm -hmm. okay, it's gonna move forward. We're gonna get to this part where they have the production moves because they've all agreed, blah, blah, blah. And um, yeah, that didn't happen. So I, I didn't like the Harper Harper character. I mean, the, all the characters just didn't, they just didn't feel like they had a specific, like they weren't built up enough. Maybe one dimensional might be a little harsh, but I just. But they kind the, of were. I didn't they, get a feel or a flavor for any of them. They just seemed kind of like Hollywood caricatures of what we think people are like. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we really didn't get a lot of background on anybody. There were so many characters that you really couldn't really connect with anybody. Yeah. You know, um, Libby was a selfish bitch. Um, uh, Alex was controlling and jealous for good reason, apparently, and just. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what her deal was. Um, 
Elaine was decent. She seemed like a good person. And that's Bo, probably why she was killed off, right? Yeah. Bo, well, everybody gets killed off. Pretty much. Um, uh, you've got uh, Harold Brookhants, who, there's just too much. But, you know, so you get a bit of, there's what just too much. Oh. Huh? Yeah. So, <laughs> what did he do? I didn't finish so, it, so. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, uh, Merritt just came off like kind of an asshole just constantly. No, um, from and, day and, one, she acted like that. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and one of the things that I had to keep reminding myself is that these were all very young women in, mm -hmm. their, in their early to mid 20s mm -hmm. at, at most. Uh, Merritt was 21. Wait, uh, no, I think she was like 25. No, uh, no, she was 21. Um, she wrote the book when she was 16. So Harper Harper, Harper is was 24 was the or oldest 25. one. Yeah, and I think she was 24 or 25. Mm -hmm. Because and I remember Merritt uh, when, when Elaine had come up and said some shit to her, and she was like, I am 21 years old. And that, that's why that stuck in my head. Harper, um, Harper, the whole Harper, Harper name, that was just ridiculous to me. Yes. Oh, uh, my mom loved that book. And she thought, well, you know, it's not that big of a deal because she'll get married and then she'll be Harper somebody else. But she didn't. So, so she's Harper, Harper, which is I, stupid. That's stupid. That, that particular name, double name is stupid. But it, as soon as I heard Harper, Harper, I thought of Sirhan Sirhan. <laughs> That is totally fair. Right? <laughs> I was like, oh, that's right. Well, the, the last book I read was uh, Daisy Jones and the Six, which, Colette, did you read that? I don't think so. I think you'd like it. I think I gave it, I think I sent it over your way. Hmm. What's it but called? Daisy Jones and the Six. It's a, huh. uh, it's a, uh, uh, it's supposed to be like a, uh, a biography yep, about the band it. yeah and there's a the the drummer in that uh the percussionist her she goes by karen karen because her first name is karen and somebody asked her oh what's your last name and she thought that he didn't hear her the first time so she said karen and the and then she kind of became karen karen from that which at least that makes sense and it wasn't her given name but this is actually something that her mom made a conscious choice to you know care uh, yeah Harper, yeah Harper. i mean i didn't get the sense the, right so every time we talked about harper i pictured kristen stewart Oh, the very, I kind of, no, I didn't, I didn't go with that particular person, but I had that kind of, uh, yeah. I very well could have been. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. I, I pictured her and then, uh, Audrey, um, I guess is basically supposed to be Anna like Jamie Lee Curtis of, no, she was, uh, Audrey was, um, they described her as um, kind of like Anne Hathaway. Yeah, but I mean, as far as her, so she is the daughter right. of a famous screen queen in yeah. the same, you know, in the mm -hmm. same way that Jamie Lee Curtis was. And then Jamie Lee Curtis made her own horror movies. Mm -hmm. I did not get horror from this book. Not even only movie. trying to get through it. That that was you know, but talking to you during you sounded like you loved this book. So I'm no, I, I I didn't, you know, I I was okay with it. Um so I took off Wednesday. I had listened a bit mm -hmm. on Tuesday during work, and then Wednesday I took the day off because I was supposed to go to the post office to send Andy something and go to the library, drop off a book. I still haven't made it to the post office, Andy, oh. so don't get excited. Um, get ready to go check my mailbox. Nope, nope. And um, and go someplace, go to the UPS store for another another errand. Woke up with a terrible, terrible sinus headache where I all I did all day was literally lay on the couch with my headphones, uh, my earbuds in, and 
listen to this book from I got I rolled out of bed at 11 and I didn't stop listening until it was almost eight o'clock and wow. you know doing it doing and that was that took me I think I still had like like seven hours left or no four or five hours left when I got done with it but no no I had I had more than that I had like seven or eight hours left um and it was it was I was digging it because there hadn't been I was digging it because I really liked the the uh the historical aspect of it I liked um learning more about this book and and uh Alex and Libby but then it just got it just got to be too much it felt um it felt really bloated that the same kind of shit just kept happening and they're talking about the same things. And then when we get to the, um, the, the modern day stuff really killed it for me. It really did. It killed yeah. it for me. I, when, you know, they've, so you've got, you've got merit and um, you've got merit and uh, uh, Harper who are, supposed to be dating first of all there was no chemistry i didn't feel a bit of chemistry between any of these people no, none, none. Mm -hmm. um so you've got merit and harper who go out on a date harper is like obsessed with with social media and posts fucking everything so mm -hmm. they immediately get mobbed she didn't have any consideration for the fact that merit was with her whether merit wanted to be involved in this or not um which kind of pissed me off. It didn't piss me off. It was disappointing and, and really showed, uh, really showed Harper as being super self-centered. Um, so I didn't care for that. And then they get to, they get to Brooke Hans, and then there's like this weird threesome going on, which I did again, no chemistry between any of these people at right. all. And then, you know, I want to kiss you. Both of you. No. You mean just, I missed a threesome? But well, they did. didn't do well, they didn't do anything. Uh, you failed like, before any of that happened. Yeah. I mean, I almost kind of got the sense that uh right, so I don't know if we have properly made this evident, right? So there's a lot of time hopping that happens yes. in this book, right? It starts <laughs> sorry. And you know how much I love that early 20th century and then we keep jumping forward to current day and we get to read somebody's like constant fucking instagram uh which i don't care about and then we jump back to whatever it was 1906 um and so there's a lot of that and um <sighs> Yeah, the cur the current day characters, there wasn't anything remotely appealing or interesting about any of them. Mm -hmm. um, it, and then at some point you find out that um, everybody's being manipulated. Oh, yeah. So we should talk about that. So in the scene where... Sorry. <laughs> I thought, okay. I, turned, I thought I turned the notice off. Oh, um, I thought the good humor man had shown up at your house. <laughs> <laughs> or the good humor woman. Um, so, uh, so they bring Audrey in, and Merritt hates Audrey right off the bat. Um, so when she's auditioning for the for the movie version of Merritt's book, uh, Harper has been uh, cast to play Flo. Um, or because Clara like, or one of them, I don't know. Why wouldn't you take a character like Kristen Stewart or whoever that chick was who played Shane in the L Word and put them in a period drama? <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Harper Harper's a bit, you know, she's she's famous. She's riding the the, the wave of celebrity, and then they pick Audrey, who has not not she's really nobody at this point she's, she's a had, daughter of right she's a daughter of a famous scream queen but has really nothing going she's got her. Not apparently a, 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 a tampon commercial i 
if I remember correctly, was uh, yes. was her big thing. Mm. Um, was Prince William in it? I mean, Prince Charles. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so uh that so, would make a hell of a commercial though <laughs> so uh so they bring her in to bo's house bo's the director uh also gay. also there's gay. pretty much no oh, straight people there are no straight people in this movie everybody's gay or bi you know the way reality is it, it made it reminded me of uh reading an alley valley book uh you know every single person is gay uh, or by well, I mean, so there's uh, eventually you learn that the the land has been cursed, and I think that it was cursed to make everybody on it gay. <laughs> well, that doesn't make sense because Bo was w wouldn't have been there, and then so we get to oh, okay, well, hold on, hold but on. He was there. Well, but he was gay before he went there. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was a little. But that's why he later. went. Oh, be, oh right? and he it, had it, his creepy experience because you know everybody has an orangery and that's really where all the all the business goes down in the orangery right kind of. all of the sexy times are in the orangery and no, all of, the of them are in the orchard right? are in the orangery and um except for all the people who die falling down the stairs <laughs> There's a lot of people who die falling downstairs. Okay, so there's a bunch of other shit that I don't. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, oh, so and I just want to say that I pulled up this uh, review. Yeah. And they themselves agreed that it was frustrating that we never found out who the narrator was. Okay, you need to go back. I don't have. Oh, I do. I've got my ebook here. Okay, so. Tell them about what Bo is doing. Because you said you, you brought up how everybody found out that they were being right. So we never talked about that. So Bo is this uh, gay Hollywood director. I think he is known for horror films. Um, he decides that he is going to direct the version of this book written by Merritt. And he is going to make a film within a film. So he is going to surreptitiously film the actors and then they're going to do some fucked up, made up things to be scary. And then won't that be exciting? Um, so it's all like super duper fucked up. And I think Audrey gets pulled in at the very beginning. So she's the only person of the three who knows that a lot of the stuff is fabricated and who knows that they are being surreptitiously filmed because all of this is done at Brookhaunts, which is in Rhode Island. And apparently that is a state where you only being secretly recorded. Um, so, I mean, that whole thing was just gross and I wanted to take a Silkwood shower. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That. I don't know why anybody, first of all, would agree to that. And then uh, I just, well, they only had to have one person agree. Well, no, because it turns out that all three of them, all three oh. of the women knew and were told, don't. Nobody else knows. That, nobody else so, knows. So, so don't tell anybody. All right. So yeah. Harper knew, Audrey knew, and Merritt? Merritt knew. And Merritt knew. Yes. And Audrey, and, and I, I knew that Merritt had, or not Merritt, but Audrey, damn it. Harper had to know because she's one of the fucking producers in the goddamn thing. I think right. that they should, it should be Merritt, Merritt, and Audrey, Audrey. And I think that's just how everybody in this book should be named. <laughs> it would add more life to the characters. It really would. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to Wikipedia because I had deleted it off of my off Right. Of my so chair. the whole the whole thought is that they're going to have like this... Um, and and they said it's because they know that Harper spends all her time on social media and she really, really does. And so she would be filming things and uh, posting on social media that, oh, my God, this crazy shit just happened at Brookhaunts. And that would basically be like free advertising for mm -hmm. the film. And then, you know, so then the film would come out 
And then they would also release this documentary of the making of, ooh, all the spooky spookies. And then really nothing was spooky. And I have to say that by the fourth or fifth time that a fucking yellow jacket just showed up for no reason. That's what I want to ask. I don't even remember what, why, the, why did they continue to have the yellow jackets? I know that the initially Clara fell into the yellow jacket thing, but oh, uh, what? I don't. Well, I, don't I mean, that is that's what killed her and Flo. Right. 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 Um. And I so think, is it? It was just supposed to be Clara and Flo, like. No, it's part of the curse, right? Like right? there's certain things that just happen, and the yellow jackets are part of the curse, just like that weird sort of slimy mold yeah. that would appear and then it would vanish. Um, that's just part of the curse. But so okay, so it turns out that. It, it, the curse didn't have anything at all to do with the book, um, which was Mary McLean's book. Which uh, is a real book. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, look at that. I had no idea. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm still waiting for that to load up. But, um so it, it, essentially what happens is uh, uh, the the principal of the Brookhaunt School for Girls has a copy of the book. She's she's given her copy from her friend, Sarah Dahlgren. I'm telling you, the end of this book, I don't even fucking, I can't even, I can't even wrap my head around the twists and shit. So... I, I don't even know how to talk about it. Like a small the book. Twist and shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So uh, Libby Brookhants, who's the principal of the school, gets a copy from her friend. Libby then gives, a co gives her copy to Clara and Flo, the young lovers, because she wants them to, I don't know, have some... Uh, some reference for their young love and blah de blah de blah. The girls die uh, because of the bees and horrible uh, cousin Charles chasing the, uh, or Uncle Charles, whoever, chasing Clara through. And she steps in the in the wasp's nest, falls in. Um, so they then, die in the orangery, right? Oh, and then I forgot all about Eleanor. Then Eleanor Faderman. Uh, takes the book when nobody's looking right goes crazy Apparently, it's hard it's hard to get a copy of this book because it's all about lady love right so uh so she takes the book and, and meanwhile there's this bad heroin society plain bad heroin society because heroines are always good and beautiful and so now there's the plain bad heroin society um which really doesn't get explored tremendously like everything else in this book nothing <laughs> is explored tremendously because there's too much nonsense that yeah doesn't there's just so much anything. extraneous stuff agreed yeah, really so eleanor dies because she has been eating these little planty things blooms, over here. yeah these uh, because blooms. i think they make you hallucinate right yeah which then they went ahead and the modern day people made tea out of it. And, and they decided to trip in yeah. the orangery. In the orangery. Where, like you do. And like I think they were naked. <laughs> like, right? like you do. Yeah. Like you do in the orangery. Sure. I don't remember. It's Did, very possible. I don't know. But uh, yeah. So then the Eleanor overdoses on the hallucinogenic plant, and she yeah. dies with the book next to her as and well. And then Libby, Libby takes it back, right? Right, because now she needs to tear out pages that <laughs> a page have right. notes on them that could potentially be traced back to her, right? Because now there's three of her students are well, dead, and she well, the reason. She the reason she took the page out was because Alex uh, is increasingly paranoid. Also, there are servants in the house, in the mansion, with the, in spite mansion, with the 
it's a right beautiful power. Uh, who and one of them, Adelaide, Addie, is mm -hmm. is um, and it, it seems to be having a thing for Libby. I know, viewers, this seems very convoluted and there's a lot going on because there is and it is. Um, so, but it's not even engaging. That's the no. problem. You can have an ensemble cast, but, you know, make these characters believable, you know? And it just, it's almost like it was a challenge. How many people can I throw in here? You know, how many scenes can I create? But it just became empty. Yeah, you know, so so you've got so Alex. She finally gives Alex. Uh, Alex ha, has said, you know, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with this book. And then after Eleanor died, she's like, I want to read this fucking book. And Libby's like, Oh shit, I got to take this page out because Sarah, who Libby had affairs with off and on, and they were very good friends. Sarah had underlined and bracketed and circled words from uh from passages on a single page so libby's like fuck what do i do so she takes and she rips that one page out and she sticks it in another book as you do uh and then so she so alex has the book alex reads it alex is is already starting to develop some very serious mental health issues yes um she is super paranoid. Um, she's, they have these stereograph cards, uh, like a, a, a view master, uh, you know, precursor to a view master. So that, that Sarah had brought back from France with, they were risque with women in different poses and whatnot, which in the book, I, I posted some of the pictures for you guys. The book is illustrated and they're all kinds of really kind of interesting illustrations throughout the book. Um, so Alex notices that these images are changing after she read the book, after she read uh, Mary McLean's book, the images are changing, which just proves to her that there's something horribly wrong with this book and anybody who reads it is going to be affected. Meanwhile, it doesn't appear that anything was actually changing. And then uh, Alex is going crazy trying to find this page. Uh, because not for not for any reason that even resembles the the real reason why Libby took the page, but because she feels like this is the clue as to why these girls are dying or or something. Um, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to go. <laughs> right. So listening to it as an audiobook right you don't get any of the footnotes as footnotes it just gets mixed into the the regular narration and you don't get any reference to the illustrations but at the very beginning it tells you you can go out to the publisher's website and go to this website and download a pdf so i did oh um, okay but all it is is a map of Brook haunts. So it's like, <laughs> That's here's so cool. where Spike Tower is, and here's where. That meant, abs I mean, there was no point in a map whatsoever. Hmm. Like, at no point was I like, what is this northeast of? <laughs> like, where is the orangery on the school grounds? Where's the greenhouse? Like, I didn't give a shit about any of no, that. No, who cares? So, I mean, if they're going to make a PDF, I don't understand why they didn't put all the illustrations in there. Yeah, they hired an illustrator. They hired an illustrator when you, they, she even gets her own, you know, yeah. listing on, on Goodreads. Yeah, I don't know. It would have been nice that. to see that stuff. Yeah. So, okay. So uh, let's go back to Adeline. Mm -hmm. no, okay. Kidding. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. He works in the house. In the house. So, uh, so let's let's talk about Harold for a few. And minutes. I guess she watched them at least once. Get busy. It's it yeah, it like somebody bathing. Huh? Bathing. Well, but that oh, was like the, a weird, creepy scene. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, but, it's like the, was that like the only kind of weird, creepy scene, or was there others? No, ones? there were there were others. Um, she <laughs> she apparently um, uh, okay. So so Harold Harold is introduced into the story. So after Alex Alex was uh, graduated before Libby, so Alex went off and was doing her shit. Libby was still in school. They correspond through um, uh, letters. Uh, but kind of drift apart, right? So Libby then goes, graduates and goes to Chicago. She's from a rich family in Chicago. She goes to Chicago. This is the year of the, of the World's Fair in Chicago. So Libby takes a train out to Chicago, or I'm sorry, Alex takes a train out to Chicago. They spend some time together. Uh, dumbass Sarah is still there um, along, along with... Uh, Okay, I'll look at that. Uh, uh, so Libby and Alex are reunited, um, but turns out Libby's pregnant. And um, uh, and Alex is like, what? Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, then, then somehow Harold Brookhaunts, who's really into the supernatural and seances and all this shit, um, he, I forget how, he comes into contact with her through his, her father, I think, who right, they were friends. Right, and he is friends. an old man. He's in his 60s um, and, and is, is with his main psychic mama, Madame Vallette. Right. Uh, and um, they convince Libby with Alex's help eventually. Right. They, they are young lesbians who met at Wellesley. Yeah. Right. They're like in their 20s. Yeah. They're, they're very early 20s because Libby had just graduated. So they convince Harold convinces Libby to marry him. She doesn't want a kid. She doesn't want to be a mom. She has no desire for any of that. Uh, he wants to have a kid, but he's gay. Um, and, uh, and so they figures they can help each other out. Alex is, is down with it because he's got this huge chunk of land and they can build a school and her and Libby can live essentially happily ever after. Um, so Alex helps talk them into it. All the uh, oranges and oh. <laughs> yellow jackets. You, yeah. So, um, uh, so that's how that's how they all end up at Brookhans with the school and and all that. Now, maybe maybe you can explain this to me. When it's all coming to a head and Libby goes back, Libby ends up in a madhouse uh, for a while after Alex falls down the stairs and gets dead um, while trying to kill while trying to kill the the, the uh, was she trying to kill Adelaide or was she, she was trying, trying to, to kill, kill Hannah Hannah right I don't remember why there, there was just because she was in her weird sort of paranoid delusional Forever. Yeah, but, but I don't remember specifically what she uh, thought was going to happen in there. It won't make any sense. It won't. So, yeah. uh, so this is what I need help with. So Libby comes back, and Ava, the daughter, uh, Harold had sent her to France to be raised by Madame Vallette's family. I don't know. So Ava comes back. Um, and this is like the first time she meets her mom, uh, fresh out of the out of the insane asylum. And Libby is like, "Fuck this shit! I'm burning this joint down." And she's and there's some shit with the little matrioska doll, matrioska whatever dolls, uh, and I don't know what's going on with all that. So she starts burying shit and burning shit and. Adelaide comes out and tells the story of exactly how all this happened. So yeah, so like what? The, th two, three dozen pages before the end. You, you find get, out that nothing is absolutely what you, you thought get it was introduced at all. To like another thirty people, <laughs> and then find out about so 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 somehow Adelaide is is uh, is. Madame Vallette's niece, some shit, and they all 
uh, I don't know. And and, well, and she's she, the lady who she was the one who sold the, the dolls. dolls. Yes. <sighs> And how did how did Alex, who stood there and talked with her for all that time about those fucking dolls, how did Alex not notice that this is the same chick who now oh, is living in her it. house? Like, I don't, I don't see know how that gets explained. Like, if they were like, oh, yeah, Russian nesting doll lady, I remember you. Sure, come to our house and... Working. No, she ended up being there because because Adelaide married the house Hannah and Carl's or not Carl, whoever the fuck that Casper. Hannah and Casper were the people who they were the housekeeper people, right? right? We're back in the early 1900s, so they, they were the housekeeper people, and the the son mike michael i believe his name was married adelaide max max he had gone like who the fuck is, is there another person that i met max. some some m name so yes. he was out of state someplace else comes back with this new chick who who then becomes their their maid i right I it and was just was too much and, from the russian nesting right place. Exactly, right. but I don't. Um, how did they not wreck? I don't. Okay. But, but I then, maybe but then, they did. maybe you can explain this part to me. So Simon <laughs> Simon, Simon Everett yes. is the dude who got Libby pregnant, Correct. and apparently that was all planned, also. Mm -hmm. And then Adelaide says something about the spelling and pronunciation of right. uh, so who was that just Simone Verrett right Is so that Simon Everett Everett right so it was just one of their male dudes named Simone no then how did she get pregnant from Simone magic <laughs> that's I just don't understand they swapped eggs <laughs> I'm so glad I quit when I did. Apparently, spit does make babies. Oh my God! So, so tell me this. Tell me this. What, do, do the three do Harper, Audrey, Harper, and Harper, Merit, Audrey, Audrey, and Merritt, Merritt? Yeah, <laughs> Merritt doesn't die, but does Harper and Audrey die? No, but none of them but, die. No, but the, but they do get stung. That's by hilarious, it. right? Yeah, so right. the oh, people yeah. that we don't want to die all die, and then the but, people that we do want to die all are, live. They're yeah, I, wanted, I wanted all the contemporary people to die. I was like, what so. The? But wait, so then well, let's talk about the curse. Better, the director Bo does get stung by a yellow jacket on the red carpet. Yay! <laughs> Uh, okay, so the red carpet after I finally got it to load. I'm going to the last page. Oh, Lordy. Okay. Oh, my God. It's so much. Okay, so let's talk about the, the curse real quick. So uh, you, you go through the book. You go through the entire thing thinking that the curse is related to the book, right? I mean, I did, right? Is that, Colette, what did you think the curse was related to? Did you? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But it's reasonable to assume that I mean, because yeah, you I think got it is the book reasonable. so early. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because the, so the, the, the book, you know, and um, once you look into the book and you realize that Mary McLean wrote that book and, you know, it's like secret sapphic things. And then um, I think she completely recanted. And was like lesbianism is gross. Yeah, I got I got kind of something like that from one of the from something in the book where they were talking about how she went off and did this other thing. Yeah, okay. I think she's probably just a random lunatic. Okay, so so but the curse really is about the brothers. It's about a whole set of people that we had never met. That we had before. never met before. We right. heard about the brothers. Yes. Because they're the ones, that's how, you know, we were told that Spite Tower, that the tower in Spite Manor was built because one brother wanted to block the view of the, of the ocean and the beautiful scenery from the other brother, right? Mm -hmm. But it turns out that it was nothing like that. It was about 
uh, it was about the brothers, one brother in particular, being really pissed off that and this old lady, yeah. right, that this old woman wouldn't sell her land to them. And then he tried to rape her. And then she tried to burn the shit down. Um, and it was about really, you know, how he built that tower because it was the one thing that seemed to bring her joy. And, and she, then there's talk about her actually being a lesbian and living with her passing partner. And it was just too much. It was too wow. much, too fucking much, too fucking much. Okay. So talk amongst yourself for a minute. I'm almost to where. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm kind of disappointed they didn't all die. All the contemporary people. I just don't understand what the point of having the contemporary part was. If anybody could explain that to me, what was the um, point of it? So in the same way that I said that the reviews seem to be loved it or hated it, um, that seems to be similar. In that people were like, oh, I love the present day stuff because I hate historical things. So I wanted all the historical stuff not to be there. <laughs> I think, um, you know, and then we feel the other way. Um, I think she was probably attempting to appeal to both groups, right? The contemporary, the people who are going to read about Harper Harper and love that mm -hmm. are not the same people who are going to read about... Yeah, you're yeah. probably right. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, yeah, capture all the markets. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it did feel like we were trying to stuff 10 pounds of shit into a two pound bag. Ain't that the truth? Oh, fuck. I'm going backwards. God damn it. No wonder I couldn't get to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. All right, let me see. But yeah, I mean, so, uh, and here, I will share this. So the review that I posted in the chat here is yeah, from I'm looking at it. a website called booksquadgoals.com. Um, and they, just so you know, they both loved this book. And they loved many, many things about this book. In hmm. fact, I think that they're like, oh, yeah, I could have read 200 more pages of this. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, they loved mm -hmm. it. That's so, um, right. But the part that I pasted in here was where they were talking about the narrator, because like yeah. I said, the narrator's voice was the only character that I really liked because she was just so snotty. She was, yeah, snarky and... Yeah, they yeah. have this they they reference this one footnote um at the beginning when she's talking about charles and the footnote says did i tell you that charles had named his car america i hate him so much <laughs> <laughs> that's just not typically the kind of thing that you get from like a third person omniscient yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. so it was great having all that in there because she would come in there and be like oh yeah no one fucking likes this chick um, like that, I loved that. It was like having the story told to you by, you know, a friend, someone mm -hmm. that you know and enjoy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but then they specifically say, so I'll say I was a little bit disappointed that we don't get a reveal about who this narrator actually is. I guess I, my theory is right that here. he's just the collective ghost of all the dead women. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the narrator, okay. So it's a footnote. <laughs> so, a, a, attached to the very last sentence of the book. Okay, what's it say? Uh, March 15th entry in I Await the Devil's Coming. But then you knew that already, didn't you, readers? It's Merritt's book. They talked about how Merritt has got a contract to write two or three more books. Well, um, I Await the Devil's Coming is a Mary McLean book. Oh, it is? Oh, well, then I guess it's Mary McLean. <laughs> but she, well, she, would, she wouldn't have done anything contemporary. <laughs> Maybe it was her ghost then. Oh, God. I, I assume, because I didn't know Mary McLean was a real human being, that this was, uh, that it was Merritt, because she's the only author in the group, and she was actively writing 
while on set about the experience. Um, she knew more than anybody else about the history of what happened uh, in the earlier stuff. I wait the devil's coming. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the picture of her on the cover is just all you would hope that it would be. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm going. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, because remember, Merritt was focused on wanting to basically finish Truman Capote's. Yeah, but then she, novel. right, but then she, uh, I think she, didn't she decide to go in a, in a different direction with that because she, because she, it wasn't working and because it, that's why she went on, on, yes, you're right. But she was going to do it totally differently. Uh, right. Now, I mean, I have to say, I did enjoy Aunt Elaine, right? She knew Truman Capote. She was... Uh, a Brooke haunt, so she knew all of the old sort of uh, mythology about the property and the school and Alex and Libby and their horrible untimely demises. And of course, all the business that happens in the orangery. Mm -hmm. Is that really a word? I, it is for this book. I'm only talking about a weird coincidence. Before I <clears throat> gave up on this book, I, <laughs> like I all listened. things will either happen, <laughs> like just like AD and BC. There's right, like right. before I gave up on this book and the, after the BC, yeah. Um, <laughs> when they were talking about Truman Capote and his unfinished work and his parties and all this other crap, I got uh, the next day I was at work and I got an email from one of our internal folks whose last name was Clutter. Oh, that's interesting. That Isn't that the weirdest yes. coincidence? That, Colette, you have a blank face. The Clutter family is from, Clutter. is Clutter. The Clutter, Clutter. family. They're, they're the, the family that was murdered uh, oh, in, in, when, in, in Cold Blood. In, Cold yeah, Truman okay. Capote's book. Yeah. And which, we, which we did on the show. We did. Yeah. We did, yes. but I did not remember the name. Yep. Yeah, Clutter. Yeah, so I was like, I was going to ask, are you related? To that? <laughs> no, 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 let me just leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, that, so that unfinished, was it even unfinished? The last book of Truman Capote ended up basically losing him almost all of his friends mm -hmm. because he, he fictionalized uh, everybody that he knew but and he knew. was kind of shitty and bitchy about it yeah. as you would expect him to be. True. <laughs> Man, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think there were really only a handful of people who stuck by him after that. And then yeah. he died not too, too long after. So yeah. it's an interesting concept to want to come back and sort of revisit that book. Yeah, actually. Yeah. So we're about out of time. Um I feel like all we've done is just take a whole bunch of stuff and like swirl it around. Kind of like the book. In this big, mer like nobody, nobody is going to need to worry about spoilers because you <laughs> could possibly have followed all of the twists and turns of the small intestine that is this book. I feel like I feel like this was primarily this entire hour has been primarily for for you and I specifically to kind of work out our our frustration because this could have been a good book. It could have been. Have. It really could have. If there was just too many things, too yeah. many characters, yeah. um, it just all kind of for me. I I, I think. Um, like I said, I, I really enjoyed the 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 Brooke Hans part. I did not find any of the the contemporary characters interesting enough. And and once once it really got going with uh, we're gonna do all of this this spooky behind the scenes shit, that kind of was like that's when it kind of jumped the shark for me because I it just it didn't seem like something that. That it's people would like two, agree two to. Witch project. 
It, it was, and they even talked about Blair Witch right. in they this, did. you know. They did. Oh, that's right. You had gotten that far. So I got that far. Yeah. So I mean, could I recommend this to a friend? No, I don't Enemy? think I would. Yes, friend. No. <laughs> I just it's just too it's too long. Uh, if it had been cut tremendously and and like the last half of <laughs> not the last half, but like the last few chapters could have been reined in, and somebody said, "Stop, mm -hmm. stop." I what is have, it that you really want? I would have wanted to have read more about what happened to Flo and Clara. Exactly. We didn't know anything, really. All we know about Flo and Clara is that they died. and they Well, made, I think they we did get other. at least one or two flashbacks of them. Yeah, but it wasn't much. We it did, but, 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 they, but they were primarily of them dying or leading yeah. up to their death. There were, you know, we got much more about Eleanor, and then she died. Um, like I really thought Eleanor, as it was going, I thought she was going to actually have some some part in the book, but then she died pretty quickly. Was, I don't know. I think that was. I mean, I just I don't know. I, I yeah, that's how like I kind of felt. The, it's like oh, all the really interesting characters die early on, and we don't really explore them deeply. No and way. then all of the irritating characters, we delve deeply into their psyche and spend a lot of time with them to the point where I'm like. But they're not even interesting, at least. Can in they all just get in a bus and drive off a cliff? No, now? God, right? Mm, mm, mm. And we'll call it the curse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the reveal of the curse was disappointing to me. Um, mm because it, it kind of came out of nowhere and it right. seemed and unnecessary. You already had a good thing going with, with the book stuff. Yeah. Why, you know, like the book why... was a red herring really. Well, I, mean, I, I kind of feel like it was. I uh, think that some of the stuff, right. Was not a setup by the, the director and the film. Right. Crew, right? right. Some of the stuff, some of the weird stuff like legit happens, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, that doesn't make it a horror book no. for me. Mm. No. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad I bailed when I did. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you did, too. Yeah. Um, I don't feel bad about you not reading it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm glad that I'm glad that Colette finished it, though, because I don't think I don't think we would have had enough to really kind of talk about it. Maybe. And, and yeah, maybe. But then we get yelled at from people who are like, yeah, read the book. You can't talk about it. Well, I can talk about I think we can talk about how far we got it's and not how anything she... you damn well want. Yeah. Our channel. There's really uh, two kinds of people, right? There's the kind of person that's like, oh, this book is terrible. I can't wait to get to the end. And then there's people like Andy and me that are like, Fuck this. Oh, no, I am like that, too. I just enjoyed it uh, too short for us to, or, you know, enjoyed it. I didn't start early enough to where I could be like, <laughs> we should pick something else. Because we've okay. done that before. Yeah, we life have. Is, life is too short yeah. for shitty yeah. books. Yeah. yeah, that is so true. That is so true. Yeah. So, um, well, I got to read these links, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Save them because once we close this down, they're they're bubbling. Oh, all right. Well, hold on. I'm closing it. So, uh, thank you all for joining us. <laughs> I don't know if we can say it was a good time, but I got to drink and I got to hang out with, <laughs> I got to hang out with my pals. So that yeah. was. Good. I had a good time. We need to pick another book uh, yeah. for for next month. I do have a suggestion, but I've suggested it before. Um, so oh. we'll see how. It goes. Oh my God! That <laughs> no, it's just I hard. had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> you suggested it before. There was probably a reason that we didn't read it. I don't Yay. remember what it was, and it's such a good book. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So, I'll, we'll talk to you later, everybody. Yeah, we'll keep you. We'll keep you posted. Adios. All right. Bye.